Hello, this is video lecture number 51, The Meaning of Freedom. Our subsections today are Requests for Land, Republican Governments in the South, and Building Black Communities. So when only Tennessee ratified the 14th Amendment uh, and was readmitted to the Union, uh, Congressional Republicans, strengthened by their victories in the 1866 Congressional elections, passed the Reconstruction Act. These laws forced unreconstructed former Confederate states to meet Republican conditions for readmission, including granting African American men the vote. While these measures were called radical by their detractors, and this phase of Reconstruction referred to as radical Reconstruction, uh, these measures actually fell far short of what some in Congress desired. They fell even further short of the hopes of women's rights advocates uh, that the vote might be extended to them as well as blacks, uh, a frustration that seriously split the movement, uh, but led ultimately to the creation of a new and eventually successful woman suffrage movement. During Reconstruction, African Americans obtain, obtained a number of civil and political rights, most especially in the realm of politics. While no former Confederate state was controlled by blacks, uh, a large group of African American politicians surged into prominence, seeking to use government power to help constitu constituents uh, who previously had not been even regarded as citizens. While many of these new political rights were lost in the years following Reconstruction, other gains, especially in social and economic realms, were more enduring. At the insistence of the freed slaves, planters dismantled much of the old slave regime, uh, replacing gang labor and the old slave quarters with a new system of individual plots worked by families for shares of the crops. Black marriages were formalized, and African Americans gained control over their family lives. They pursued education, built new institutions such as the black church, and began to acquire property. While white racism and white landlord power raised enormous barriers to black advancement, uh, through the years increasing, though still small, numbers of African Americans became property holders. So let's have a closer look at this section, the meaning of freedom, with our first subsection, the quest for land. One of the freedmen's most pressing goals was land ownership. Thousands of African American former slaves expected to receive small pieces of the former plantations of their owners. After Johnson's order restoring confiscated lands to the ex-Confederates, African Americans reacted angrily and fought pitched battles with plantation owners in some locations. Uh, but white landowners frequently prevailed. Republicans wanted to restore cotton as the country's leading export, so they attempted to transform former slaves into wage workers on cotton plantations, but not as independent farmers. Only a small number of radical Republicans like Thaddeus Stevens uh, believed in giving former slaves pieces of their former owner's estates. Congressmen believed in taking land from Indian tribes and returning plantations to their former owners uh, to restart the southern cotton industry. Landowners wanted to retain the old gang labor system with the wages replacing food, clothing, and shelter that the slaves had once received. Landowners paid low wages for black agricultural work, uh, leading to major poverty for the former slaves. Blacks fought back uh, by going on strike, by seeking work in lumber and turpentine and railroad camps, uh, and bargaining for fairer wages. Now, a major conflict raged between employers and freed people over the labor of women. When planters demanded that freed women go back into the fields, blacks resisted resolutely. For African American women, emancipation may have increased subordination within the black family. Uh, some black women, however, 
headed their own households. Uh, for many freed women and freed men, uh, the opportunity for a stable family was one of the major successes of post-Civil War life. Many African American families accepted the Northern ideal of domesticity. Uh, women attempted to remain in the home and devote themselves to motherhood while men were urged to work diligently and support their families. Now, sharecropping was a distinctive labor system uh, for cotton agriculture in which the freedmen worked as tenant farmers, exchanging their labor for the use of the land, house, and implements. Sharecropping was an eventually an unequal relationship uh, since the sharecropper had no way of making it through the first growing season without first borrowing uh, for food and supplies and, and this put them in debt. Sharecroppers furnished, uh, I'm sorry, storekeepers furnished the sharecroppers and took a collateral uh, lien on the crop as cotton prices declined in the 1870s. Uh, many sharecroppers fell into permanent if the merchant was also the landowner, the debt became a pretext uh, for peonage or forced labor. For ex-slaves, sharecropping was preferable to laboring for their former owners, uh, but it was devastating to southern agriculture. It committed the South uh, inflexibly to cotton because it was a cash crop and limited southern incentives for agricultural improvements. A rural economy emerged that was mired in widespread poverty and an uneasy compromise between uh, landowners and laborers. All right, the next section is Republican governments in the South. Between 1868 and 1871, all the Southern states met the congressional stipulations and eventually rejoined the Union. Republicans in the South needed the African American vote and helped to organize uh, groups like the Union League, a biracial secret fraternal order that functioned as a powerful political club to uphold justice to freedmen. The Freedmen's Bureau also helped freedmen on economic matters and established schools for African Americans, including black colleges such as uh, Fisk and Hampton Institute. Um, by 1869, there were over 3,000 teachers, over half of whom were black, uh, instructing freedmen in the South. Southern white Republicans uh, were called scalawags by Democrat uh, ex-Confederates. Uh, white Northerners who moved to the South were called carpetbaggers. Uh, both groups wanted to bring Northern capital into the South for economic development and personal gain. Although never proportionate to their size and population, uh, black office holders were prominent throughout the South. Republicans uh, modernized state constitutions, uh, eliminated property qualifications for voting, uh, got rid of the black codes, and expanded the rights of married women. Reconstruction social programs called for more hospitals, more humane penitentiaries, uh, and asylums, uh, Reconstruction governments built roads and revived the railroad network. Most impressive of Republican reconstructive, uh, Reconstruction government achievements was in the field of education. By 1875, over half of black children were attending school in several deep southern states. <clears throat> White children also benefited from higher graduation rates during this progressive period in southern public education. Okay, on to the next section, building black communities. After emancipation, southern blacks could engage in open community building. Uh, in doing so, they cooperated with northern missionaries and teachers. Independent churches uh, quickly became central institutions of black life. Black churches served as schools, social centers, and meeting halls. Black ministers were community leaders and often a political spokesman. Teachers and charity leaders embarked on a project of racial uplift while black entrepreneurs built businesses that catered largely to a black clientele. Some black leaders promoted 
integration of public facilities. But most stayed away from this thorny issue. Uh, while many black parents preferred all black schooling to protect their children from hostile whites. At the national level in 1870, Congress addressed desegregation with a civil rights bill championed by radical Republican Charles Sumner. By the time it was passed in 1875, it was a, it was a narrower version, uh, requiring full and equal access to jury service and to transportation and public accommodations, irrespective of race. Another near century would pass before Congress passed the Civil Rights Act of 1964. So this does conclude today's video lecture. Please answer your review questions and continue on with your notes and with your reading and with your study.